Hello, investors, and welcome to our session here today. My name is Ken Rose, and this is Short Verticals. And great to be here. So interesting developments in the market here over the last few days. We've had very nice, strong runs to the upside. Looks like we're pausing here a little bit today in these types of market conditions. How does the short verticals strategy fit in? Well, that'll be our primary focus of our discussion here today. But before we get too far along, let's go ahead and run through some disclosures here. And just to remind investors that options do carry a high level of risk and are not suitable for all investors. The information we present here is for general informational purposes only and should not be considered an individualized recommendation or endorsement of any particular strategy, chart pattern, or investment strategy. Do keep in mind that for the sake of simplicity, the examples of this presentation do not take into consideration commission and other transaction fees. We also use a paper money software application for this. This is for educational purposes only. We want to remember that successful virtual trading during one time period does not guarantee successful investing of actual funds during a later time period as market conditions do change continuously. Also a reminder investors that short options can be assigned at any time up to expiration regardless of the in the money amount. An in-the-money option has a higher risk of being assigned early. It's important to keep that in mind because the paper money virtual trading application will not assign a short position early, which is different from what could occur in a real trading account. We will discuss the option group because they become applicable to our discussion in relationship to this. Also, a reminder that with a stop limit order, you risk of missing the market. You you do risk the you do you risk you risk missing the market altogether. And of course, it's always important to remember the past performance of any secured or strategy does not guarantee future results. So investors, kind of get back to our discussion today. What we want to do here today is we want to start off by looking at a paper trade that we put on last week on Cisco over an earnings announcement. We also want to look at an additional open position that we have. Then we want to kind of take a quick review of our overall performance with regards to this, with regards to paper money trades we've done in here. Then we want to take a little bit of a step back. We want to look at the technicals in the market and look at in these type of technical situations in the market. What type of what type of metrics would we be using? What type of technicals would we be looking at with regards to entering in a short vertical trade? So with that, let's go ahead and pull up the Thinkorswim platform here, and we'll bring that up right now. As that's coming up, just want to come over here and welcome everybody. So I want to welcome uh, John and Larong and Bill and and Har Harlot three thousand and John the Noble Savage, the, no the Noble Savage, and Kevin and Krishna and Truth will always prevail. Frank and Tom and AJ, Michael, David, and everybody else, Dragon Rider, Parit, and Raj, and Robert, and Life in the Fast Lane. So great to have everybody here. Also looks like we have Michael Fairborn over there in the chat window. Great to have Mike here with us. Very knowledgeable investor. Do feel free to send your questions over there to Mike. I'll try to peek over there periodically to see if there's something that I can help out with as well. All right, well, just looking at our chart here, the investors, this is the chart for Cisco. And some of you remember the last week, and let me just see if I can pull this up so we can do a little bit of drawing here on our chart. That would be nice. See if I can get a little tool up here that we can use and just do a little, a little few annotations here as we're going along. Many of you remember the last week with regards to this earnings announcement, we put together two short verticals, actually. We identified a potential range that the stock could move in, sometimes referred to as a market maker move. And that range went up to went up as high as this area right here. And let's do this. Let's shift this a little bit better so we can see this. So that area went up as, our, as high as this area right here, and it went down as, as low as this area right here. So that was our forecasted movement. Uh-oh. <laughs> I say that because we totally blew that out. Now, we discussed this last week, the market maker move. You know, how effective is it? Well, well, in, in order to make that determination, you want to look at many trades over a period of time. We have found it to be overall beneficial, but we all, but there are there's always going to be the possibility of having trading situations like this where we just blow right out of it. So when we set up our trade to take advantage of the underlying security staying within this move as designated by the market maker move, the stock totally blew out of it. This was an earnings trade. So with regards to the time frame in the trade, we're only looking at about one to two days. When you blow that far away from it, there's very little that you could do. So this is one of those trades that, that resulted in a maximum loss. And exactly about, you know, I'm, I'm going to give you an estimate of what the maximum loss is because when you think when you when you when you calculate a loss, that maximum loss is theoretical. You're not really sure about the exact loss until you actually get out of the trade. Because you may not be filled at points where you would anticipate getting filled. But the theoretical maximum loss on this trade, we got a $31 credit. 
And the maximum loss on a on a short vertical that's a dollar wide, and we get a 31 credit and 31 cent credit. You take the distance between the strike prices, which was a dollar minus the 31, and that gives us a a theoretical maximum loss then of 69 cents. In other words, 69 dollars a contract. We only did one contract in here because of the risk related to an earnings announcement. Okay. Now again, this is a theoretical maximum loss. We definitely could have incurred a loss that is greater than that, depending on where we would be filled. But we do want to note this as a losing trade. Now we also we also want to we also want to look at an existing position. But I, I just wanted to recapitulate this a little bit. Okay, so that's 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 the risk you take when you're looking at those large gains over relatively short periods of time. Well, let's move on here then a little bit. I'm going to take that off of here and let's move our drawing tools off of here for just a second. I want to come in here and look at an existing trade that we put on some time ago. And this is going to be COF. This is a short vertical that we put in. It looks like we have nine days until expiration. It looks like this one's doing okay. We have, we have PL here of 228. What we might want to do on this one, we might want to look to see where we're at in relationship to our current profit level. This is a theoretical profit level of 228. How much of that 228 are we looking at in relationship to the theoretical max gain on this trade? You can see that we did 12 contracts right here. If I come up here and let's put in COF and take a peek. And I'm going to come over here to trade history for COF. And we're going to need to go back in time because we put this one on a while ago. I think 30 days will probably do it. There it is right there. Okay. So on this one, we did 12 contracts. We're looking at a 24 cent credit. So our theoretical maximum gain is going to be the credit that we receive on the trade. So let's just take our 12 contracts right here and times that by our theoretical maximum gain of $24 here. Then that would be looking at 288. So we're at 228 and the theoretical maximum gain is 288. So let's see where we're at in relationship to it. I'm going to take our our theoretical 228 right here and divide that by our 288. We're currently sitting at 79% of our maximum gain. So one consideration be at this point investors is do we want to take 79% of our maximum gain and take that home with us, which we could do, okay? Or do we want to hang in there for an additional nine days in an effort to pick up the additional 20%? Well, let's see what the chart is telling us on this one. We'll, we're here to our short strike price here is at 101. So let's look at COF on a chart and see where we're at in relationship to 101, realizing we have nine days till expiration. And 101 is going to be right down here, I believe. Yep, that's it right there. So we have nine days till expiration. Do we feel good about staying above this 101 and picking up the additional 20%? Okay, that is the question. All right. If we if we want to look at it from a theoretical probability standpoint, which sometimes can be beneficial, we can come back over here to the monitor tab. And we're going to have to take this back to our 30 days. And what you can do is you can identify the delta on the short strike price. Here's our short strike price. We sold the 101 put. So we took a look at the chart, but from a, from a theoretical standpoint, what is the delta suggesting as far as our probability of this trade running into difficulty this particular point in time? That is a 1 December. I'm just going to make here 101. It's a 1 December, and that is a put. We'll come up here to the trade page, COF. Here we are right here, 1 December. And we're talking about a strike price on the short put vertical of 101 right here. So the theoretical probability of this trade getting into trouble is 8%. From a theoretical standpoint, we have an 8% probability that this trade could get into trouble and a 92% probability that it won't. So that's looking at it from a delta perspective. This is looking at it from a chart perspective. Ultimately, I'm going to throw it out to all of you, okay? Do you want to, you can, and just over there in the chat window, just chat in, um, chat in, take it, which means we'll take our profit or leave it, which means we'll leave it for the additional 20%. So think about that here for a moment. There's just tends to be a little bit of a lag between times I, I ask a question, they show up over there in the chat window, but again, take it, 
if you think we should take the profit or leave it, if you think we should go along with that, 92% probability that we're going to be okay on the trade. So take it or leave it. All right. Okay. So I'll give you, I'll, again, I'll give, I'll give you guys a little bit of time here. So I've got take it, take it. I've got two take it's. Take the money, exit, take it, take it, take it, take it. Okay. All right. So we got take the money and buy a turkey. I like that one. Okay. Let's go ahead and take it then. Okay. Let's come up here then and we'll close out our trade up here to the monitor page, activity and positions. And I'll do a right click right here. And we'll choose create closing order. So I'm going to buy this vertical back to get out of both sides of that. Like so, and it looks like we're buying it back. Now, when you're when you're looking at your profitability level, the system goes off the mid price right here. So if we can get filled at the mid price, we'll take it. If we have to go above that, we're going to go ahead and leave it. OK, so we want to take it if we get filled at the mid, but we don't want to go above that. OK. So we've got, let's see if we can close these things out then for five cents. Going to do a confirm right here. And there's our short verticals right there. And we'll go ahead and click on send. When this box comes up, it's always, please know you've selected a weekly option series with non-standard expiration date. We'll send that. I'm going to let it cook here. Whoop, got filled. Okay, so that trade is now done. All right, investors, so I haven't had a chance to book that trade. However, I did book our losing trade. And just kind of get to give you an idea of how we've done so far. So we started doing these short verticals back in July of 2020. We've now completed 184 trades. However, the numbers I'm going to give you here is based on 183 trades because I haven't had a chance to book uh, this profitable trade. However, I did have a chance to book the losing Cisco trade. But over that period of time, we've had 183 trades. We've been successful on 82.5% of those trades. We've been unsuccessful on 17.5% of those trades. Our average return on risk, and this does include losing trades, is 17.6%. Our average days in the trade is is 13.4 days. Again, this is a paper trading account, so you wouldn't want to expect to achieve the same results in an actual live trading type of a situation. All right, so with that, investors, let's back up a little bit and come back over here to our charts right here. Let's talk a little bit before we get going with regards to new paper trade. Let's talk about taking a look at market conditions and from the market conditions, kind of getting an idea of what type of a technical setup you may be looking at from a trader's perspective. So right now we're looking at the S&P 500, which is, which, is, which is somewhat of a mirror for the entire market. Of course, there's going to be individual stocks that are going to vary. Also, if you're, if you're primarily trading things, things that are high tech, so to speak, you may want to look a little bit more at the NASDAQ. For our example here today, though, let's look at the S&P 500. So here's our chart. I'm going to decrease the time frame we have on our chart here so we can zoom in on something that an option trader is probably going to be look is going to be a little bit more interested in rather than looking going that that far. And this is it right here. So what do we got here? Well, we have a we have a we have the underlying market in an overbought situation. Here's RSI. It's suggesting the overall market is overbought, which would suggest it could be it could be in a situation where it could be moving to the downside. But overall, the market has been in an uptrending channel, coming up here a little bit of a pullback here, moving up here, breaking above this previous resistance level breaking above this resistance level right here and continuing to move up. So from one standpoint, we would tend to be a little bit more on the bullish side rather than the bearish side. But what would we be looking at with regards to a technical setup from a bullish trade? Well, one possibility would be to look at a stock that has recently broken above an area of resistance, possibly with some strong volume, and then in that situation, possibly sell a short vertical. That way would be that way would be that way would we would be trading with the overall market. We don't need to trade with the overall market though. We can look for individual stocks and trade based on their technicals. But a lot of investors feel a little bit more comfortable if they are trading with the overall market. So that would be one situation would be to look at a breakout of a resistance level, and then following that breakout of a resistance level, use that as a theoretical new support level and sell a short call vertical below that. If we're looking at that in relationship to the S and P five hundred right here. I've got this as a resistance level right here, right there. Notice we came up here, we bounced, we moved down, we came we kind of banging up against it, then we finally broke above it. This would be resistance. So if we were trading this, if we were trading the S&P 500, you know, you actually can because there are options available, but we're not going to today. But you could go ahead and sell a short put vertical down below that theoretical resistance level. That would be one potential setup. 
Now, another potential setup would be this, and that would be to look for a downtrending stock that's kind of going like this, has moved up towards a theoretical resistance level, which would be a previous support level that is broken down below, and you're looking for it to possibly roll over and head down. If we were doing that, then we'd be making a play based on the overall market being in an overbought situation. In other words, anticipating the market to make somewhat of a move to the downside, but this still would be considered to be a counter trend trade and would be considered to be more aggressive. But if we saw a situation like this, well, then we could possibly look at this and do a short call vertical above that theoretical resistance level right there. Okay, so just some, some technical consideration to look at the overall market. So with those, with those, with this type of a situation, these type of patterns to consider, let's see what we can find. If you know, we may very well find a trade that may not fit into either one of these two parameters and feel comfortable putting a paper trade on them, but we may feel a little bit more comfortable. We found something somewhat going along these lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and we'll pop these guys off of here right now. I'm gonna take this line off of here because I don't, I don't need that in future discussion. I'm gonna move my time frame back over here. I think I was sitting at about two years, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that, well, maybe, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay going with that. All right, so let's look at some individual stocks then and look for some potential uh, setups in relationship to that. To do that, I'm gonna open up our left-hand side here. Here is a watch list right here. And let me come back over here. So here we are right here. How are we doing on time? Looks like we're doing okay on time. So. If you look over here, investors, we have our watch list. We've had a discussion about this in previous sessions, our $1 wide liquid watch list. This is a watch list that is meant to identify stocks that tend to have good liquidity for options trading. Now, the distance between the strike prices gives us some versatility. Generally, generally speaking, the distance between the strike price is somewhere in the neighborhood of about a dollar to two and a half dollars. There may be some in there that are five dollars, just so we have some stocks. Uh, re, re, related to some particular areas that may be in focus at a particular point in time. But generally speaking, we're looking for stocks that have $1 between the strike prices. And also, we're looking for stocks where the option prices are quoted in penny increments. Okay. And in here, we have, and in here we have had a session that we've devoted to the process of building this watch list. Okay. So you might want to check your archives in, in relationship to that. Right. So, I've got this watch list up right now. Again, good liquidity, generally speaking, representation from all the major sectors. And rather than looking through 5,000 stocks, we're just gonna focus on, I think there's somewhere, I think there's somewhere in the neighborhood of about 80, 80, to, 80 to 90 in here, give, give or take a few stocks. I've loaded these stocks up and I've sorted by implied volatility to bring the highest levels of implied volatility up to the top. Then in here, we've, we've intentionally passed on the top 10 of implied volatility just because the reason these stocks do have high levels of implied volatility is because they have a history of being rather volatile. With regards to this type of a strategy, we're okay with some volatility, but we don't wanna to have too much volatility. So we've, so, we've, so we've opted to pass on the top 10. So I'm gonna come over here. I've, I've added my implied volatility column here. I'm just gonna come down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10. And that's where we're sitting at right here. Now it's interesting. Because earlier today, NTR here was not in the top 10, <laughs> which is why I kind of had it penciled in as possibly one, the, one, one that we may want to look at here, okay? But it looks like it has moved back into the top 10. I want to make sure I have that shifted there, and I do. So we may, we may spend a little bit more time. I don't want to spend too much time looking, looking for individual stocks. You know, in these sessions, before the session goes, I usually go out and find one or two potential stocks. But keep in mind, I do that over a period literally of about 10 minutes. I, and I always wanna let, I, I wanna let you know that because we're not making a recommendation for, for an individual stock in here. And you could most likely do much better because you have more time to kind of go through and look for a stock that may fit a little bit better with regards to what you're looking at, with regards to probability of success and also reward risk in relationship to those, okay? But let's come over here and take pull up a chart here over here we go and let's see so if we come out of the 10 here i'm going to come down to you know we, we, we kind of co go down here but i'm going to skip down here to nvo right here just in the interest of time so this is a stock that that in relationship to our previous discussion a stock that's recently broken above a resistance level right there in fact we can note that i'm going to come down here and 
There's our resistance level. So it's broken above the resistance level. It's actually coming down and testing that resistance level as a support level. Okay. So this would so this would meet that parameter. We could look at this one and possibly do a short put vertical down in this area. That would go along with the overall stock. You know, it it has been in in somewhat of a sideways channel, but it broke out of that sideways channel. This stock also has an interesting technical pattern called a, called an ascending triangle. If I bring another line up here and connect these lows like this, there we have an ascending triangle, which is a bullish uh, price pattern. And we've broken out, or in, other, or in other words, completed the ascending triangle, which gives us a target somewhere, somewhere up here, probably up there about an additional $15. We don't know that we're going to hit that target. back right now we're coming back here and we're fading and we're touching it. So this would be situation one. If we wanted to do this stock right here, we could we could look at coming down here and selling some selling a short put vertical below this resistance line, which again I'm going to put a label on that. Edit my properties and let's show that over there on the left. There it is right there at 10205. So let's see what we can do here then with regards to potential trade. I'm going to come up here to the trade. Right here, I'm going to I'm going to open up a scratch pad here for just a moment, just to just to highlight some of the key metrics we're usually looking at when we're doing these short short verticals. We're basically playing the part of an investor that is looking at these metrics. Keep in mind that 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 you may see these metrics differently, and that is totally okay. Okay, so we're basically playing a part of this particular investor. But when you look at these metrics, do it's important to make these metrics your own. In other words customize them and change them so they match up more with your investing style than our hypothetical investor in this situation. Okay, so these, so these are the metrics that we'll typically use in here. We're looking for a return on risk of 1% for each day that's in the trade. Okay, we're looking for a probability of success of 70% or higher. Those are two of the metrics. So return on risk and probability of success. And keep in mind when you're looking at those two parameters, it's kind of like a, it, it is somewhat like, like a teeter-totter type of effect. If we go for a higher return on risk, our teeter-totter is going to go like this. We have higher return on risk. Our probability of success is going to slope down here to the downside. If we go with a higher probability of success, then our return on risk is going to slope down here and go, and go to the downside. So you want to find that sweet spot that you're comfortable with with regards to looking at return on risk and also probability of success. We'll take a look at, at some of the considerations you, you can look at in doing that. Let's start off with, though, with our probability of success of 70% here on NVO. Notice, this is kind of nice, we do have the $1 wide strike prices, which is nice. These options are, are these options quoted, quoted in penny increments? It looks like they, well, you know, I, I don't know that they are because it looks, like the, it looks like these options are quoted in nickel increments, okay? So this is in our watch list, okay? Um, it would, it, I'd, I'd feel a little bit better about it if these were quoted in penny increments rather, rather than nickel increments. In fact, just double check this. I'm going to pull up a, we're looking at weeklies here. If we pull up the regular ones, do we still have nickel increments? It looks like we do, okay? So one negative on this one from a choice standpoint is that we are looking at nickel increments rather than penny increments would be would feel a little bit better if we were looking at penny increments rather than nickel in increments but nickel increments doesn't necessarily kill the deal okay so coming back up here and looking at our chart here then so we want to be below 102 dollars so come back over here to the trade page and find so here is 102 we want to be below that we also want to look at our delta right here our delta is giving us a theoretical probability of success. We want our theoretical probability of success to be at 70 or higher. So we're looking for a delta that's at 30 or lower. And it looks like we get to that point at the 99. So we'd be looking at doing a 99 by 98 short vertical in here. Now, some of you may be asking the questions, again, why are we doing a dollar wide? We actually had a rather in-depth discussion on that last week. Okay. One of the reasons we're primarily looking at dollar wide in here is because of the return on risk after transaction fees is going to be, is typically going to be higher than if we go to two dollars wide or five dollars wide. Okay. Now there are some advantages. There was there was one there was one advantage that we did find last week in relationship to going with the wider, and that is in the event you set a stop loss. However, stop losses are a little bit tricky because you're not sure exactly where you may be filled, particularly when we're talking about options. But I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with going wider. But in here, we've we've tended to go we've tended to go with the with the with the tighter um, distances 
between the strike price. However, if 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 you you know we 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 can't take a vote on it, perhaps on one or on one or two of these. Hey, do you want to stay with the dollar wide or do you want to go with a wider one? And I'm I'm okay putting. I'm I, I'm okay going ahead and putting some in here that that are they're going with wider. The nice thing about wider, the nice thing about wider is you get a higher credit. However, if you're looking at a, if you're looking at a specific level of risk, even though you're doing multiple contracts, and so you're looking at you're looking at multiple transaction fees. Still, when you're looking at it from basically return on risk standpoint, generally speaking, you're going to be getting a higher return on risk when you're looking at the one dollar wide versus two, three, or four or five dollar wides. Good. This one has a delta of 27, which means the theoretical probability that this option will be in the money on the expiration date is about 27%. So that would give us a 73% probability of success, which fits within our parameter here. We want our probability of success to be 70% or greater. So we'll come down, come over here then. That's kind of bounced around, but I'm going to do a right click right here on the 99. And we'll choose sell. We'll come up here and choose vertical and see what we got here. So and these are these are quoted in nickel increments. Again, yeah, it'd be nice, but you know, you, but 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 it doesn't necessarily kill a deal if they are. So we're looking for a return now of at least one percent for each day that we're in the trade. We're sitting here at twenty three days in the trade. Here's our fifteen December's twenty three days. So we'd like our return on risk to be at least twenty three percent before transaction fees. So if we're able to capture this twenty five cents. What would be our theoretical return on risk then? Let's pull up a calculator here and take a peek at that. Up here and 25 cents. Our theoretical maximum loss on this is going to be the distance between the strike prices minus our credit of 25. So that's going to be 75 cents. So we'll take our theoretical max gain, which is going to be our credit. 25, we'll divide that by our theoretical max loss of 75. That gives us return of a theoretical return of 33% over 23 days. So that gives us 1% for each day that for each day that we are in the trade. Now, could now could we take something a little a little bit less than that? We could. These options are quoted in penny increments. So if we go down by a nickel here, then we're then we're at 20 cents. And another thing we've said is in light of transaction fees. We need to get a credit of at least 21 cents or higher on a dollar wide spread. So we're not going to move off that. No, that's interesting. Look at that. It just it just moved down here to to 22. Um, that 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 is a theoretical number because we know that these are quoted in nickel increments. We're not going to really get a 22. Well, I guess it is a possibility, but yeah, let's 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 just lock this in at 25. Say, hey, if we get 25, we'll be good with this. If not. Then we'll go ahead and pass on it. Okay, so this is sitting at 99. Then let's see what this looks like on the chart. If we come, we we know what our probability of success is going to be here. Our probability of success is about 73 percent. We want to see what it looks like on the chart. So we'll come over here and pull up the chart and see what that 99 short strike price looks like on the chart. So I'm going to take this resistance level we broke through, which is now theoretical support. I'm going to duplicate that on the chart. I'm going to do right click right here. And choose edit properties, and we'll set this one at 99. And let's see what it looks like on the chart. So that's so that's what it looks like on the chart. So as long as we stay above this 99, the trade should be in pretty good place. Should should be in a pretty good place. Do we feel comfortable with that? It looks like this is our support level in relationship to the ascending triangle. If we broke down below that, that support level could possibly come into play as well. So that would be. This, this let's let's look at this as being trade possibility number one NVO okay, and we may come back to this one okay trade possibility I'm just going to write down here NVO and we did a 99 on our short strike price trade possibility let's look at one other one here then as far as a possibility here we'll go over here I'm going to collapse we've talked about some of our metrics here let's look at some additional charts. We're coming down here. NTR, unfortunately, it, yeah, NT, NT, NTR. Was, I, I was kind of, I was looking at the line, lines on the lines of NTR with regards to a move back and a pullback here. But let's not worry about that. We'll start off here at NVO and let's go through some of these. I'm going to go through these relatively quickly, investors, because we don't want to burn up too much time doing this. While on the other hand, you guys have a lot of time, right? Well, I'm not saying that you have a lot of time. Period. I'm just. <laughs> in relationship looking at these, 
you um, you're not you're you're not wrestling with a clock, so to speak, right? Okay, so let's see what we can do here. We've got a we have we have a resistance breakout right here on digital reality trust. Now maybe maybe I should back up just a moment because some of you may be asking, hey, why did we why did we sort by implied volatility right here? Why are we starting at the highest levels of implied volatility and working our way down? The reason for that is if on the short vertical strategy, the higher the levels of implied volatility from a theoretical perspective, the greater the credits are in relationship to the net credit received when you enter into a short vertical. So that's, so that's why we're starting at the top and working our way down is because we theoretically we have a potentially greater reward to risk for the same ballpark levels of probabilities in doing that, okay? There's dollar. See that one right there. Again, try to find something here relatively quickly. Now, this is interesting. We have a move up and a pull down. If I come over here and identify this right here, so we so we we are we are in an uptrend. We're moving down, and we're approaching a theoretical support level right here. This would be what we called last week a falling knife trade. I shouldn't I shouldn't say last week. The actually the the COF trade that we got out of today, that was a falling knife trade. We're looking for something pulling down towards level support. We might feel a little bit more comfortable as all the way down there. However, it's nice to have this candlestick right here. A candlestick right there is referred to as a hammer candlestick and does suggest a potential pause as part of this move to the downside. So what could we do here with regards to a short put vertical down here? Well, that's a possibility. Let's look at a few more because I'm kind of interested in finding one that may be a short call vertical. Even though the overall market is bullish, it tends to lean itself more to short put verticals. Where we are in that overbought situation, it might be good to maybe look at a potential short call vertical possibility. And that would be where you have, just to reiterate that, which would be looking at it in relationship to that, that would be a situation where you have a downtrending stock, okay? And it has moved up with the overall market. It's approaching this theoretical resistance level. And so you're looking for it to roll over here. So you're doing a short call vertical right here rather than a short put vertical. We'll look at a few more here. We may come back here to PNC. In fact, let me note PNC right here. and. We got here as far as possibly it's just hard to find anything downtrending. <laughs> the market has been so strong. Yeah, well, you know, that one here, this is interesting because if you look at this high, this high is lower than this high, and this high is lower than this high, low, lower lows, and now we're moving down again. So this is a possibility. Pioneer Natural Resources. Where's our resistance level? Our resistance level is right here. Okay, so can we do a, let's come over here and show this over to the right here. So can we do a short call vertical at, let's just say 240 or higher, in relation to what's going on right here, in relation, in, in the, on this one right here. So come over here to the trade page for PXD. And 23, oof, these are, these are two and a half dollar wide strike prices. I kind of like it. Well, this, uh, again, this, that, that, that doesn't necessarily kill the deal, okay? Right here, and um, let's find our 240. So if we go back over here to the trade page, we want to do a short call vertical at 240. Here we are at 240. Um, our delta on the 240 is 33. If we come down here to the 240.250, or I should say up to the 240.250, then our delta is 26, which means our theoretical probability of success is going to be 74. Okay, you take 100 minus the delta, get your theoretical probability of success would be 74, which meets that parameter of 70% plus. Not great liquidity on the strike price. There's a twenty dollar difference. It is a two hundred two is a two hundred thirty four dollar stock. You know, I'm, I'm looking at this. I think I need to come in here and do a little bit more whittling away at our one dollar wide liquid strike price. I think I did this as the scan. I haven't had a chance to go and go through here and and fine tune a, a little bit more. Okay, but let's just see what it looks like here. I'm going to come up here and do a right click at the two forty two fifty. Right there, once you sell vertical. 
And now we've got a, we have a credit here of 50. Let's lock that in. If we can get filled at the minute, we'll be looking at 50. So let's look at our return on risk in relationship to this. Now we're at $2.50. So maybe a little bit lower than the 33 we got here, or it could be higher, you know, depending on other factors. But we're two and a half dollars wide. We're looking at a 50 cent credit. So what, to calculate our theoretical reward to risk, we take 50 and we divide it by we take, we take the distance between the strike prices, we subtract from that 50, okay, which is going to be $2. And we take our 50 and divide it by the $2. So let's see what we're looking at here. 50 divided by 200 equals 25%. So we're looking at a 25% return on risk on 23 days. That's okay. That, that meets our parameter right there. So that's okay. Let's see what it looks like on the chart. 242.50, we'll come up here, bring up our chart, and I'm gonna grab this line. And let's um, duplicate that. And then we'll come in here and change one of these to 250, I believe is what it was, if I remember correctly. So that high, let me, boy, I think I may have, no, yeah, it's 242.50. I the 50 kind of stuck in my head. Let's go to 242.50. Okay, so 242.50. So there we have it right there, investors. So let's let's take a vote on, on one of these, okay? We can do PXD, okay? We can do PXD. Or we can do PNC. That's interesting. They both start with a P. PXD or PNC here. Okay, so this is our, our line of demarcation here with regards to PNC. And that was going to be a 99 on the PNC. Was it PNC or was it NVO? There it is, NVO. Sorry about that. Okay, so we're looking at, we are looking at the, um, the PXD versus the NVC, NVO. Let me jot that down so I don't forget that. NVO and PXD. Okay, so NVO or PXD. Do feel free, just, just go ahead and chat over there in the chat window. NVO or PXD, I'll leave it up to all of you. And do keep in mind, these are just two. There's a lot more in here that you could look through and no doubt find something that's going to be a better fit, particularly in relationship to what you're looking at in, re in relationship to reward risk and also probabilities related to that. Okay. What do you think? PXD or NVO? Okay. So I'm seeing over here NVO. And NVO, and it looks like I've got one vote for NVO. I've got NVO twice. It looks like NVO is taken. I got one PXD. There's an NVO, NVO, NVO. It looks like NVO's got it. Okay, so let's go with NVO here. NVO, and we're doing a 99, looks like a 99, 98 short put vertical. We'll come up here to the monitor page. We'll trade NVO. We're generally, generally in here, investors, we've gone out about 23 days. Some, well, I should say somewhere in the neighborhood of about 23 to 30 days. Now, if you go out longer, you're going to get a bigger credit, okay, because you're, because you're selling over a longer period of time. However, then you, then you need to be correct with regards to your technical analysis for that longer period of time, okay? If you go shorter, you're typically going to be looking at a smaller credit, okay? However, then you don't have to be right with regards to your technical analysis over as long of a time. But in here, we've generally stayed in the 23 to 30 day range. So we'll go ahead and stay with that here today. So we'll stay with 23 here and we're doing a short put vertical with a short strike price at 99 right here. We right click there, we'll go ahead and stay with a dollar wide here and do our vertical right here. And this is kind of bouncing around. We, I believe we did our analysis based on getting filled at 20. I'm going to lock this in at 22. Although I don't know how the math on that's going to work because I see nickel increments here. However, it, it is possible to get filled in between the bid and the ask. That is a possibility. But let's, um, I th I'm, I'm going to lock this in at 22. And at 22, let's just review 
our reward to risk because that's lower than what we're looking at here with regards to 25. If we get if we get 22 or better, we'll take it. If not, we'll go ahead and, and leave. What I'll do is I'll, I'll leave the trade in there. And I think what's going to happen is we'll, we'll either get filled at 25 or we won't get filled. It'll, it'll basically step step up in that area. But let's see. Let's see what we're looking at here with regards to reward to risk here then. Got 100 minus 22 equals 78. We take 22 divided by 78. And we're looking at 28% over 23 days, so it still meets that parameter. How much do we want to risk on this trade? Let's say we're okay risking $1,000. So risk on it is seven. Now it's now now it's back up there to twenty five. That makes more sense to me. So let's put it up here to, to twenty five. How much do we want to risk in investors? Because we are looking at about seventy five dollars of risk for each one of these. So let's say let's say a thousand dollars. One, two, three divided by seventy five bucks. That's going to be thirteen. I don't like the number thirteen. I'm going to round it down to twelve. Call me superstitious. That's okay. And there we are at 12. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and do a confirm and send here. We want this to go into our short verticals. This gives us a breakdown, including our transaction fees right here. And I'm not seeing the commissions in here. There should be some commissions in there. I'm not sure why those are not showing up, but on options, there are commissions. So do be mindful of that. Okay. Alrighty, so with this then, we'll go ahead and do send. It's in and we got filled. Now, investors, just a little reminder that um, we are in a paper money trading application. And the paper money trading application can and often is more generous than an actual live trading account. So in here where we get filled on trades in here, on an actual live trading situation, you may not get filled. So be mindful of that, okay, in relationship to that. All right, well, investors, let's go ahead and wrap things up and see how we've done here for today, all right, as far as what we wanted to accomplish here. Basically, what we want to do today here is we wanted to discuss techniques right here. We wanted to talk about looking at the overall market, and after looking at the overall market, looking to see um, how this, how what type of things you'd be looking at from a technical analysis standpoint in relationship to the overall market. We also talked about probabilities, and also reward of and also re, reward of risk and balancing those two, and playing and playing the part of the investor in this situation is looking at a probability of seventy percent or higher and a reward of risk of one percent for each day that we're in the trade. So we basically focused on those areas. And I think we did a pretty good job of covering those. Didn't really have much of a chance to look over there in the chat window, other than to catch our votes. But I can see that you guys have kept Mike extremely busy. So big thanks. To Mike for helping us out here today. Hey, just to remind investors, you can follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Ken Rose CS, and I post things on Twitter related to this area as well as other areas of investing. I also encourage you to follow Mike on Twitter. He posts a lot of great information over there, over there as well. His Twitter handle is at Mike, Mike, Fairborn, Mike, Mike Fairborn CS. I'm sure Mike would be more than happy to send our Twitter information to you over there in the chat. Also, circle your calendars for Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Mike teaches an excellent covered calls and short puts session as well. All right, investors, so just a reminder that options do carry a high level of risk and are not suitable for all investors. The information here is for general informational purposes only and should not be considered an individualized recommendation or endorsement of any particular strategy, security, or pattern. We do use the paper money software application here. Again, it is for educational purposes only. So always keep these things in mind. Hey, everybody, thanks again for joining us here today. Hope you have a great uh, Thanksgiving. You know, I think uh, here in the good old United States, we all have an awful lot to be thankful for. And we also have a lot of things that we need to work on as well. But great to be here. Great to be in this nation. Grateful for family and grateful for the opportunity to, to teach these things. I, I totally enjoy options and, and trading options and teaching them as well. Hope you all have a lot of great things to be grateful for as well. Hope you have a great afternoon and evening and a fantastic Thanksgiving holiday and weekend, and hope to see you back here again next time. Bye, everybody. Thanks again. We'll catch you later.